The Round Table is a secret society that was started around the turn of the 20th century by Freemason and Rothschild agent Lord Alfred Milner, who was entrusted the mission by Cecil Rhodes. When statesman and businessman Cecil Rhodes died in 1902, he was one of the wealthiest men in the world. In his will, Rhodes devoted his entire fortune to the creation of the Round Table Groups, the purpose of which would ultimately be to form a world government, or as he said in the will, to and for the establishment, promotion, and development of a secret society, the true aim and object whereof shall be for the extension of British rule throughout the world. Cecil Rhodes' strong desire for world government was epitomized in his statement, I would annex the planets if I could. Dr. Carol Quigley wrote, In the middle 1890s, Rhodes had a personal income of at least a million pounds sterling a year, which he spent so freely for mysterious purposes that he was usually overdrawn on his account. Cecil Rhodes' commitment to a conspiracy to establish world government was set down in a series of wills described by Frank Adelet in his book American Rhodes Scholarships. Frank Adelet wrote, quote, In 1888, Rhodes made his third will, leaving everything to Lord Rothschild, his financier in mining enterprises, with an accompanying letter enclosing the written matter discussed between us, the model for this proposed secret society was the Society of Jesus, though he mentions also the Masons. The secret society was organized on the conspiratorial pattern of circles within circles. Professor Quigley informs us that the central part of the secret society was established by March 1891 using Rhodes's money. The organization was run for Rothschild by Lord Alfred Milner, the Round Table worked behind the scenes at the highest levels of British government, influencing foreign policy and England's involvement and conduct of World War I. Bill Clinton was a Rhodes Scholar and a student of Round Table researcher Professor Quigley at Georgetown University. In his presidential acceptance speech, he thanked Dr. Quigley and called him his mentor. Carol Quigley was not only a longtime researcher of the Round Table, but was brought inside for a couple years as official historian. He wrote about this in his 1966 book, Tragedy and Hope. Dr. Quigley wrote, The Rhodes Scholarships, which Clinton received, are known to everyone. What is not so widely known is that Rhodes in five previous wills left his fortune to form a secret society, which was to devote itself to the preservation and expansion of the British Empire. And what does not seem to be known to anyone is that this secret society continues to exist to this day. There does exist, and has existed for a generation, an international Anglophile network which operates, to some extent, in the way the radical right believes the Communists act. In fact, this network, which we may identify as the Round Table Groups, has no aversion to cooperating with the Communists, or any other groups, and frequently does so. I know of the operations of this network because I have studied it for 20 years, and was permitted for two years, in the early 1960s, to examine its papers and secret records. I have no aversion to it, or to most of its aims, and have, for much of my life, been close to it and to many of its instruments. I have objected both in the past and recently to a few of its policies, but in general my chief difference of opinion is that it wishes to remain unknown, and I believe its role in history is significant enough to be known. David Icke wrote, One of the most important secret societies within the Illuminati web is called the Round Table. It is based in Britain, with branches across the world, and it is the Round Table that orchestrates the network of the Bilderberg Group, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, and the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Just like the ancient mystery schools, the Templars, Masons, Illuminati, or other secret societies, the Round Table groups were and are conducted in a pyramid structure with the most knowledgeable kept at the peak, and each person down the line working on a need-to-know basis, or as Rhodes discussed in his will, a succession of inner and outer circles. Jim Mars wrote, The Round Tables started out as a collection of semi-secret groups, formed along the lines of the Illuminati and Freemasonry, with inner and outer circles, and a pyramid hierarchy. The inner circle was called the Circle of Initiates, or the Elect, 
while the outer circle was called the Association of Helpers. Two members of Rhodes' inner circle of initiates were British financiers Lord Victor Rothschild and Lord Milner. David Icke wrote, These organizations, like the Round Table, are made up of inner and outer circles. The inner circle knows the agenda and works full-time to achieve it. The next circle knows much of the agenda and works to that end in their particular sphere of influence. The next circle is pretty much in the dark about the real agenda, but is manipulated to make the right decisions in their area of operation without knowing the true reason for them. The first two groups created by the Round Table Society were the British Royal Institute for International Affairs in 1920 and the American Council on Foreign Relations in 1921. In fact, the original plans for both were drawn up during the Paris Peace Conference of 1919. Though they were given different names to mask their autonomy, the Royal Institute of International Affairs and the Council on Foreign Relations are just sub-branches of the Rhodes-Milner Round Table. Dr. Carol Quigley wrote, At the end of the War of 1914, it became clear that the organization of this system had to be greatly extended. The front organization, called the Royal Institute of International Affairs, had its nucleus in each area the existing submerged roundtable group. In New York, it was known as the Council on Foreign Relations, and was a front for J.P. Morgan and company. Gary Allen wrote, Later, the plan was changed to create an ostensible autonomy because, quote, it seemed unwise to set up a single institute with branches. It had to be made to appear that the CFR in America and the RIIA in Britain were really independent bodies, lest the American public become aware the CFR was in fact a subsidiary of the Round Table Group and react in patriotic fury. This is the group which designed the United Nations, the first major successful step on the road to a world superstate. At least 47 CFR members were among the American delegates to the founding of the United Nations in San Francisco in 1945. Today, the CFR remains active in working toward its final goal of a government over all the world, a government which the insiders and their allies will control. The goal of the CFR is simply to abolish the United States with its constitutional guarantees of liberty, and they don't even try to hide it. Study number 7, published by the CFR on November 25, 1959, openly advocates building a new international order which must be responsive to world aspirations for peace and for social and economic change, an international order, including states labeling themselves as socialist or communist. <laughs>